Hello, hello, guys. Hello, welcome. Welcome to Live with Jacqueline Valdez. I am super excited to be here and super excited for our next guest. So we did start a little bit late, but we are here. So we are talking about hot fusion flow and I we are talking to the creator. We are also talking about the yoga philosophy, the truth about it, which I'm so excited about. And she is just illuminating the world and helping people shine. So I'm really excited to have Miss Kelly Green. Welcome. Uh, thank you. That's so sweet. Yes, yes, yes. We are here. <laughs> yeah, we made it. We made it. <laughs> so how's your day going, love? It is good. How is yours? It is going really well. I'm super excited through everything that we are here and we're having this conversation and we get to just hang out for a little bit. I just love your energy. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I love what you're doing too. And I love how you're using your platform to really help inspire other people to really shine and to really be, you know, a good and the best version of themselves. Yeah. So when you said the creator of Fusion Flow, yeah. I just have to make sure I say I am the co creator. Mm -hmm. um, could never ever do or be where I am today if it wasn't for my best friend, Paige Held, who is also creator of the Fusion Flow. Um, we also have Fit and Restore. Uh -oh. So all three modalities, really building strength, endurance, and then flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. Trauma release is really important to us to have all those three modalities together. Wow. Um, but before we even had collaborated, uh, I had a knee injury that right. brought me to this path. I was I went to college, changed my major a million times, always went back to bartending, <laughs> and I hurt my knee and found yoga. And I I immediately knew what my calling was supposed to be, even though I didn't even feel or know why this was even happening. It was wow. something deep inside, I cannot explain. And it was like, this is something that I have to share because it can change people's lives. For me, and I, I love the fit and I love the restore, but for me, the hot yoga was my first introduction into self-help. Um, I was always, when I was younger, cheerleading, dance to, at the gym with my dad. And I didn't think I, I don't think I realized how much exerting emotions I was doing through working out until I hurt my knee. And it, it wasn't until after and then refining and establishing a practice that it really brought me into the healing path. So for me, yoga was the catalyst for all the other things that I'm able to do now. But I think everybody finds their own, finds it in their own way, you yeah. know? Some people find it through meditation first and some people, but it, it really is, it, it's a balance. You know, it is mind, body, spirit. You can't just work the body and not the mind. And you can't just sit and meditate your mind and think your body is going to be healthy. Yeah. And I love that you said that because it is so true. It's such a unison and it's such a triangle of connection that everyone needs to really focus on is the mind, body, spirit, and just all of it healing and working through, like you said, trauma and just um, a lot of self-love. And it can be in yoga, dance, or meditation. It doesn't have to be one specific thing, but just to really heal yourself and really yourself. Absolutely. I mean, it could be hula hooping, whatever it is that you know, makes you yeah. get what we call yeah. in flow, right? You can get in flow when you're surfing, when you're painting, you know, getting in flow is, is so important, but also, you know, making sure that we're physically taking care of our bodies by, you know, moving it. There's no better way to say, I love you to your body than to move it. You know, if you think about it, 24 hours a day, your body is fighting off disease, illnesses, minor cuts, bruises. And the best way we can show our body love back is by using it. We don't have to break it down to the ground, but use it, yeah. you know, breathe and eat healthy foods. And then at the same time, find that place that gives you flow, whether it's meditating or doing something that is um, brings you into the present moment 
you know, that's what meditation is, right? Sitting and getting present in the moment. And not everybody can sit and meditate, but there are other ways. Some people can color and they're meditating and they're coloring, you know, there's meditational walks. I mean, yeah. there's all kinds of ways, but, and we can't just meditate and think our body is going to be healthy. Yeah. It, it, and I think for a long time, there's been like this mind thing. Yeah, you see it all over social media, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, if it makes you uncomfortable, that means you have to do it. And it's always about like building up, building up, building up. But if you don't have the heart, like if you don't have the spirituality and the heart, then you're going to crash and burn then too. So it, it's like, you have to really be able to get in touch with all the places of you that even the ones that make you feel uncomfortable, you know, a lot of people feel uncomfortable being soft, being vulnerable, but that's a, that's a part of it. That's a part of the healing. That's true. You know, I love that. Yeah, I love that so much that you're saying that because a lot of people have a misconception about meditating and what it really entails. And like you said, you could just be hula hooping. It's just something that you find, you know, you're passionate about and something that takes you out of your head and out of your thoughts and just being present. Yes. I mean, and that's, yeah. I'm, no, I'm no guru at it. Like my mind takes on its own character and- <laughs> It's like, you know, I'll be laying in bed at night and all of a sudden I'm replaying something that happened last month. And I'm like, well, me too. Like your mind will eventually, your mind is kind of like, you know, they say a body in motion stays in motion. Yeah. Well, if there's a mind in motion, it will stay in motion and the wheels will keep turning on and it would take, it takes on a life of its own. So recently I'm really getting more into the restore yoga because that is, I mean, it's painful for me. Restore yoga is fucking painful. Like to lay there on bolsters for an hour and blocks and not be doing physical right. and not be, it is, wow. it is absolutely painful. It's the most confronting thing for me, but that is the thing that I need the most at this time. And I think everybody's needs will change, yeah. right? It's, a, it, it's never gonna be a perfect balance. Right. Act, you're, you're either gonna be more invested in your relationships and your family and enjoying the fruits of your labors or working hard or building your, it, it, it's like, you're always kind of leaning a little bit more to one side or the other, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that as our biochemistry changes in our bodies, we need different things. And it's important for us, our body talks to listen. I think a lot of people have turned off the listening aspect. Instead, they're listening to, oh, I need to do keto diet because they say I need to do keto. We're listening to everything else and trying everything else instead of, okay, what do, what do, but what do I need? Because not, not diets are not one size fits all. No. Like yeah. you, ever, you ever have like a husband and wife and they go on the same diet together and the husband loses all the weight and the girl just like sits there and like, what? You know, the majority of diets are tested on men, you know? So if there's, True. you have to, you, you have to <laughs> listen to your body. Yes. I love that. That's so true. You do have to listen to your body. And I feel like a lot of people are not really in tune with their body and to listening to that voice and get distracted with a lot of the outside world, uh, like you said. And it's so important to just tune in, go with the flow, embrace the flow, mm -hmm. and allow the differences to happen and to go with it. And so, like, I just let's talk about that a little bit because all of the time for years, people would tell me to listen to my body. And I'm like, well, I have, I have a bunch of people talking up there. Okay. Like, I think there's a lot of things going on. Like people in my body telling me this is, well, how do I know I'm trying to listen to my body? But right. sometimes if I lean into the discomfort, I release it. And sometimes if I, if I feel it and I go too far, then I make it worse. Like, how do I know how to listen to my body? Mm -hmm. And one thing that I have found to be true in my own personal life, and they have this saying, it's called go with your gut, right? So not, not go with your heart. They call, they don't call it go with your heart for a reason. They call it go with your gut because 90% of your serotonin is produced in your gut. And if something is not feeling right for you, you are going to feel that now in your heart, when you feel it, that's you feeling anxiety, panic, something new, whatever. But if you feel it in your gut, gut that's the intuition so yeah. that helped me a lot i don't know if that helps anybody else i hope it does but um those are the differences for me because i always felt like i had two things going on in my body 
And I'm like, I'm trying to listen to my body, but it's like sending me mixed signals. <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible advice because it's true. You know, how do you um, listen to your body? How do you know that gut feeling? How do you know, you know, to tune into it? Or is it just fear? You know, there's sometimes where there's a lot of issues of fear or, you know, past trauma. And so it's like, are you putting walls up and blocks up? And th those type of things, like, that's a whole nother, like, 10 hour session because. <laughs> You know, I think childhood traumas, past lifetime traumas, even yesterday traumas, right? They say no neural pathway is ever completely erased. So literally our body and mind remember every single footprint that's ever happened in our lives. So what we can do is create new neural pathways. So you always hear the saying like when a trigger comes up, when you notice that something in your life is continually happening over and over again, right? At some point you got to sit and go, maybe it's not everybody else. And maybe it's something that I'm doing. And at that point you have to get quiet and do the work. And those answers don't happen overnight. Sometimes yeah. they don't happen in a year. Sometimes for people, they don't happen in an entire lifetime, <laughs> you know? So we have to be easy and kind on ourselves and literally just do the best that we can. Like look at ourselves, do the best that we can start over each day. Be grateful. Yes. Keep yes. I love that so much. Keep going and be kind to ourselves. It's so important right now for everyone to just, you know, embrace each other with love, embrace yourself with love and forgive yourself and start each day. It's a new day. It's a new time to make a difference and to make the changes that you need to make. Yes. Yes. And every day, every moment we have an opportunity, like, our life, whether we want to, we want to blame it on our childhood, our mom, our dad, the injury, whatever it is, where I am right now is 100% my own doing. The choices that I have made have brought me exactly to where I am right now. Yes, things may have happened to me, but my response has made me get to where I am right now. So if I want something different right now, I got to change the way I'm responding. Yes. And, you know, we can be a better version of ourselves every single day we have that opportunity to be like, okay, this doesn't feel good. Well, what would feel good? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Those are huge, important questions to ask, you know, what would you, what make you feel good and what would make a difference? What can you change? It's never too late to change. And I love that you said sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen, you know, for many years, sometimes it doesn't happen this lifetime. And we should not put those expectations on ourselves. And I feel like a lot of people are so hard on themselves right now. And these are gems that you're dropping, you know, to let people know that they can make it through. And each day is a new opportunity. You know, they always say in all type of, you know, whether you've had a, a debilitating injury like I had, whether you you know, got out of shape and gained a sh shit ton of weight like I did, or you have what you think is a genetic pass down curse, you know, or, you know, wow. financial despair. There's always something you can do to step forward. Like, and I know at sometimes it feels like there literally isn't, but I remember when all of our studios shut down and I lost the majority of my income I was like, okay, it's sink or swim time. And I just got into my garage and I did what I could. Wow. And it may not have been a lot, but it was something and it was enough. Like you just have to learn how to, to I saw a meme that says, how did you sur survive COVID? I'm dropping the C word. And it's, and the, it was a guy that said, well, I just kept working. And then the little girl was like legend. And I get that. There's people with, you know, diabetes, you know, autoimmune is that they don't want to go out and get jobs, but the majority of the people are working from home right now. Right. And there are so many avenues that you can take to get started. And I know getting started sucks, it's getting starting something or doing something new, but we can either take this as an opportunity to take a pivot, which we did. We built an online yoga studio. We started our LMS, which is a learning management system to train our people better. We stayed busy, even though the studios took a hit and we weren't getting income at all and backing on rent and all of these things, because 
on the flip side, then you have, when you do open, you have other things you can't just kind of sit idle, you know, or you know what? Everybody handles trauma, sit idle, but don't stay there. Yeah. Sit idle, do what you need to do. Cry, vent, take a vacation, drink the bottle of wine, like do whatever you need to do, but then boss up. Yes. You know, boss up. yes. And boss up. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I love that you said pivot. You know, it's so important to pivot and to just keep moving forward. And it's so cool that you've started this new online stuff and, you know, created a new path and new doors opening up for you. We actually, it, it hasn't launched yet, but we will be launching a new shift online, which is going to be like the Peloton of yoga. And it will be our yoga fit restore all virtual um, we have been filming and preparing for it ever since we got into lockdown. Um, we started our yoga joint online, which is just pre-recorded videos. They're still great quality. You're still getting your yoga joint experience. However, we're launching our new shift paradigm, which is going to be a next level of that. And so we've been working like double, triple time right now. You know, we're trying to work all out those kinks and, and launch it out. But yeah, something I, f I feel like if everybody digs deep, they can find something really amazing that they can take away from this. Yes, I agree 100%. That's so exciting. I can't wait to see your journey. And thank you for announcing that here. Stay yes. tuned. Whoop, whoop. Drop the bomb. Yes, I love it. Business partners are either going to love me or hate me right now. <laughs> Was there anyone that you wanted to do a special shout out to? I mean, we have this ginormous team at Yoga Joint, and I cannot tell you these people's passion, not only our roots are in yoga. So, you know, we even have a leadership training that's done with roots in yoga. Um, so, you know, they're all yogis first and foremost. And so there's this, there's this huge passion behind what we're doing, knowing that we have an opportunity to change people's lives through what we're doing. And a lot of our teachers, had gotten pay cuts and and salary cuts and everybody that sticked with us and kept going and believed in us and now here we are in covid and they got bonuses like we're still not you know for we got everybody including myself got a holiday bonus wow. and we're not even back to 100 capacity which we will be we know we are we see we're going back up and we see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah. but um you know, just a huge thank you to everybody, all the yoga teachers, all the people that work the front desk, our MSS, they're so important. Um, you know, the cleaning people, like anybody and everybody that stayed along the entire way of this gets a huge shout out and love from all of us, me, Paige, Bernie, the people on the top that put invest the money and continue to believe in us. Just shout out to everybody, David Lopez, Bernie, Eric Castro, all of you. We love you so much. Oh, my goodness gracious. And you have so much love. You have such a support system and you guys are so unified and you can just see the love and the passion behind, you know, everything that you're doing. And it's so important to have good energy around you mm -hmm. and to surround yourself with people that are going to support you and be there for the good and the bad and make it through to the other side and make a difference, make an impact. It, and it really is hard to find your tribe. Yeah. You know, and so recognize that your tribe may change over time yeah. and some people are going to stay and some people are going to go and that's okay, you know, to not be offended yeah. and to know that they're going to find something that's better for them. And that's okay. Cause as one door is closing, another one is opening, you know? So, um, you know, for anybody out there that has like, you know, dreams of having their own business or, you know, bringing their own art to fruition, like just don't give up. Cause for us, it's been 20 years and I cannot tell you it has been so many ups and so many downs and so many twists and turns and bumps and grinds to get to where we are now. And I foresee a lot more but it's the passion that keeps you going and you actually learn to love the bumps and the grinds. <laughs> I love that sounds, you know, because you know that when you have a low, that there's going to be some huge high that comes next. 
Like, you know it because you lived through it, right? So, you know, like, it's it's when everything's riding high for too long that I'm a little worried. I'm like, all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sounds that, you know, there's always going to be. Yeah. You know, it's just you get better at handling it. You get better at coming out of it. You get better at not letting it affect your well-being, you know, and not taking it so to heart and letting it get you sick and, you know. Yeah. Yes, those are such incredible tips because, you know, there are so many people that look up to you and that are so inspired that you created something from, you know, it happened in an injury that changed your life around, but then you really followed your path and you really tuned into the universe and where your passion was and where your destiny is. And things are now manifesting. And for everyone else, they can do this too, not to give up on their dream, to follow their passion and that you're using your platform to help others. Let me tell you, when I first started teaching, I was making $30 a yoga class and I would make $300 a night bartending. So to give up and take the risk to what I wanted to do, but I knew I couldn't do that other thing anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, it just, yeah. you just, I just knew. And you, oh. you gotta go for it because you just will spend your whole life wishing you you did and not know what could have happened. So go for it. You gotta go for it. Oh, I love it so much. I'm so proud of you. And it's just been so much fun watching your journey yeah. and seeing things unfold. I'm so excited to see more. Thank you. Thank you. And you're just so, so delightful. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It has been such a pleasure. And we are fellow Virgos too. <laughs> I, love it. I saw your post on Instagram and I was like, oh, hello, Virgo girl. <laughs> Yes. You know, I keep my ADD and my OCD in check. I love it so much. What is it that you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for making people feel. And it, it doesn't it doesn't mean that they necessarily had to feel amazing, but sometimes you have to feel sadness in order to feel joy. You know, we have people that um, come into class and, you know, they don't tell us till afterwards, but I love when they share their stories. You know, people that going through cancer, battled cancer, went through classes, divorces, um, breakups, anything you can imagine. And they, they say the yoga got it through it. And they would have moments where they have the breakdown in, in the class to have the breakthrough. Right. So, for me, I always started this because it helped me and I wanted other people to be able to help themselves. Mm. So if I can help people feel so they can change their life, people will, you know, people won't always remember how, what you did, but they will always remember how you feel. And I, that's what I want to leave behind is just to help change people's lives. Oh, and you already are. You're such a huge inspiration and you're such a huge ray of light and you're already making people feel so many things and making so many breakthroughs. I had so many people, my very first yoga teacher, Jimmy Barkin, um, he helped me start and I'll never not do anything without mentioning him because he's, you know, how I started yoga. Um, and Lisa Goodwin, um, they, made me see and believe in something in myself that I didn't know or that I lost at some point. Yeah. Like I lost, well, I think we have moments where we lose. Like we already, it's always been inside of us. Like I like looked at pictures when I was a little girl, I had that joy, I had that. And then somewhere along the way that spark got lost. And if I could somehow be that, that spark, that something that starts in somebody to let them feel again, you know, that joy or that passion or that possibility or whatever it is, you know, I've, someone's done that for me and I want to do that for somebody else. Oh, and you are, you're such a beautiful light, such a beautiful spirit. Thank yeah. you for illuminating the world with your presence. Thank you. And thank you yes. so much for having me on, for sharing your beautiful energy, for helping me with my camera. <laughs> I love it. We did it. We're here. <laughs> uh.
<laughs> it has been so much fun and such a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. It has been such an honor. Thank you, love. We will have to do it again. <laughs> love to. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching live with Jacqueline Valdez, eliminating the world one voice at a time. Thank you guys.